A dart in a garment is simply a way of removing some of the fabric to be able to create shape in a garment so that it fits around the body. So it, a dart can take a two-dimensional thing like fabric and turn it into something that's three-dimensional. So you can see that by folding out some of the fabric from the edge towards a point or an apex on the body, it creates a three-dimensional shape to help create a better fit. When we're sewing a dart, we need to mark the arms of the dart and the point of the dart. Right? And that marking can be done with a pen like this or just with a small notch at the two arms of the dart and a pin making just a small pick at the point of the dart. This marking is all done on the wrong side of the fabric. Then we'll be folding it to bring those two notches together, the two arms of the dart together, and put a pin vertically pointing towards those notches. Where the fabric is folded comes right to the point of the dart and then a pin there can just be horizontal. I'm going to be sewing now, making a fairly straight line from this point straight to the point of the dart. Uh, bad practice is to come down parallel to the fold and then swing out to the point. What you're trying to create here is a curve of the body. So if I'm going to stray from a straight line at all, I'm going to stray this way. I'm going to taper in this way just to create the curve of the body. But you can think of it as a, fair, a straight line that comes just above that pin and then your last few stitches are right along the fold of the fabric. Many textbooks will tell you to not do a back tack at the point of the dart and many people do prefer that to not do a back tack at the point instead to tie off threads or do a, a small or do a short stitch length at the end there so that your, your threads cannot unravel. And I believe that the reason people say this to not do your back tack there is because a, a less experienced sewer might, their back tack might stray inwards or you might get quite a heavy lump of thread there. But I find that doing a, sm a, doing a tiny back tack with just a couple stitches there prevents, my, prevents the end of my darts from unraveling and is much quicker than, me, than tying off the threads. So I'm gonna be showing you just doing a tiny back tack at the end of your dart there. It works perfectly. All right, I'm starting right at the notches that are the top arms of the dart, and I will just be, as soon as my presser foot is down, I can take out my first pin and just begin with a small back tack. Good. And now, wherever you, whatever you hold in front of the needle, directly in front of the needle, is where you're going to go. It's incorrect to come down parallel to your fold, so bring that fold over so that your, your pin, the point of your dart, is directly in front of the needle. And then my last few stitches are going to be right along the fold with just a tiny back tack. Good. Okay, so my stitches, my stitches actually come off the edge of the fold there. Good. So if your dart tapers off the edge nicely like that, then when you open this up, you won't, it'll be, when you open this up, you'll see a nice smooth transition. There won't be any bubble at the end. When you're pressing a dart, you can use a tailor's hand so that you're pressing in that three-dimensional shape. You're not flattening it out. And darts press toward the center of a garment or down. And when you have it going the correct direction, it should line up at the top. The peaks and valleys are built into the pattern so that they line up. When, if you have it um, if you have it going the incorrect direction, you'll see that it does not line up across the top. Find a place on the tailor's ham where the dart molds nicely to the shape of it. After pressing your dart, it should just blend smoothly. There should not be a bubble at the end here. It should just be nice and smooth like that. 